Welcome to the all new Marvel Roundup, the Southgate Media Group Guide to the Marvel Comics of the Week. As always, I am Phil Parrish, and I'm joined by... Charlie Esser! Alright, Charlie, before before we jump into the week's books, uh, we actually got feedback. <laughs> Yay! Our buddy Nuno Santos uh, emailed us. <sighs> Nuno! Uh, we love it, man. Like Nuno I said, and- yeah, like I said, we could do this on both shows, but I thought I'd read it here because it's kind of a comic book question. Because he say he said, uh, "Hi, I have a question. If Quicksilver isn't a mutant, why did he lose his powers on M Day?" Hmm. Well, the short answer is because the Scarlet Witch is the arbiter of M Day, and in the Scarlet Witch's mind, both she and Quicksilver were mutants. Ergo, people that she thought was a mutant are the ones who lost their powers. Essentially, this also explains why even though many people thought Squirrel Girl was a mutant, she didn't lose her powers because Scarlet Witch didn't think she was. She knew better. Um, (laughs) Well, you know, well, here's the thing. Um, Everyone lost their powers who... Here's the thing about M-Day. This is what you have to remember about M-Day. She said no more mutants, but many mutants kept their powers. People who weren't mutants, like Quicksilver, lost their powers. Because, at the end of the day, it was the Scarlet Witch reaching out and altering time and space based on her perception of what was best for the universe. So, yes, a lot of good guy hero mutants didn't lose their powers, but the people who she made sure lost their powers were Magneto and her brother Quicksilver, both of whom were, generally speaking, up to no good. Um, so, yeah, so, so you know, and as, as an important point of order, Scarlet Witch didn't lose her powers neither, now did she? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the thing of it. You know, no more mutants, except for all the mutants that, you know, have a <clears throat> ongoing series right now and need to keep the powers. <clears throat> you know, but... Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, so that would be why he, she, he lost his powers. Because even though she said mutants... Because here's the thing. When you speak about actual mutations, when you really talk about what is a mutant, all superpowered beings are mutants. They are people whose gen- genetics have mutated in some way to allow for powers. Now, when you talk about the X gene um, and things like that, that's a specific kind of mutation. But it is just a specific kind of mutation. Everyone is a mutant. Within that same concept, when you are looking at um, any group of people who have um, who have powers, you know, you're looking at people who who do good and do ill. And in in her desire to end mutants. Um, what the Scarlet Witch is doing is saying, end the problems of mutants, end the ostracization of people who are mutants, and also end the danger caused by mutants that are going out and just causing trouble because they feel like they're, you know, new gods in a world of men and they can go, you know, cause problems, you know. Get rid of the purple men of the world, if you will. Um... And yes, some heroes got caught up in that too, but at the end of the day, let's face it, heroes aren't always doing good either. So it's a broad blanket she's throwing, but the fact of the matter matter is, it was never really about mutants. It was never really about the M gene, because she didn't eradicate the M gene. There were, you know, mutants still survived. And that some people who technically weren't mutants, but what the Scarlet Witch thought they were mutants, or as the High Evolutionary said, appeared as mutants, mm-hmm. got caught up in the spell, is just that was what the intention of the spell was, you know. So that's why he didn't lose his, that's why he did lose his powers, even though technically, quote unquote, he's not a mutant. Is that a, is that a good bit of no pricing for you? That sounds good to me. There you go. And that's for free, Nuno. <laughs> All right. So should we get to the books then? Yeah, let's get to the books. All right. Uh, you want me to start us? You want me to start us off? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you've got two to my one. So. All right. 
All right, I'll start with uh, Totally Awesome Hulk number two. Uh, hey, he's totally did, awesome. Uh, did you get a chance to look through it at all? Or? Oh, actually, I didn't even... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I didn't even. I was, I was caught up with other other books that I was debating about. So, <laughs> all right, totally awesome Hulk number two. It picked up where last issue left off, where uh, Amadeus as the Hulk is fighting uh, Lady Hellbender, the Monster Queen of Seknarf Nine, and his sister's nearby. They're flying Winnebago, but she's talking to him through like a uh, hovering Robo Droid they have, and uh. Basically, Almadeus is pulling his punches because he's like, you know, the old Hulk used to smash his way through everything. He's like, but I'm the new Hulk, and she's a lady, so. <laughs> Until the Queen's, uh, one of her giant lizards chomps down on his head and starts swinging around, and his sister says, oh, you're going to pull your punches now? What, because the lizard's a girl, too? Because <laughs> uh, Amadeus is a sexist. He's a teenage boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh... So his sister tries to help him by shooting the lizard with uh, some kind of foam from the Winnebago. So then Lady Hellbender goes after her. So Almadeus is trying to break free, but Miles Morales and She-Hulk go to try to help her. Well, <laughs> Miles Morales goes to try to help her, but then She-Hulk stops him and he's like, what? And he's like, no, wait, watch. And uh, Almadeus loses his temper a little bit. Mm -hmm. Takes some shots at the queen. And then we get more of those flashbacks from four months ago. Oh, boy. When Bruce, the Bruce Banner Hulk was ready to melt down. And then what happened? Well, Tony and uh, the Black... Well, Iron Man and the Black Panther were trying to figure out what to do, and basically Black Panther's saying... I guess he's he doesn't come out and say it, but I guess he's hinting at they might have to kill him because he's like, Stark, 50 million people, first one, we have to be prepared. Mm. And so, you know, then... I guess through a calm link or something, Tony's telling Bruce he has to he has to uh he's like, Don't let it end this way. Mm. But that's all they really show show the flashback. Still no answers there. Uh, of course not. But uh 'cause you gotta buy the next issue too. That's right. Exactly. That's how they get you, Phil. So back in the present day, uh Miles and uh Maddie and everyone gets uh, Amadeus. They calm down and and uh, revert to normal. And I guess they, what they were saying is, uh, for some reason, when uh, Amadeus becomes the Hulk now, and then when he changes back, he might—I don't know—he must be burning calories because they they said he's always hungry when he's you know. Yeah. Uh. So and then we see Lady. Well, Lady Hellbender tells him why she's on Earth. She's. She's tracking down all the monsters, I guess, uh, they've been tracking down. Because mm -hmm. she opens up her ship, and there's a bunch in, in prison in prison in there. And uh, Amadeus is thinking about turning over the monster they were tracking to her. And his sister's like, no, look, look, she's, she's, uh, can't you see she's building an army? And uh, Lady Hellbender's like, fine, you sit here and talk while I claim my prize. And then there's a big rumbling, and Miles is like, whoa, what's that? And uh, one of Lady Hellbender's guys is like, the monster, of course. And guess who shows up, Charlie? I'll give you a hint. He whose, oh. lim he whose limbs shatter mountains and whose back scrapes the sun. Oh, uh, Fing Fang, F Fin Fang Foom? Yep. Oh, is he wearing purple shorts? Uh, well, he pops out of the water, so you really it's really hard to tell uh, his okay. bottom half. But uh, Up yeah. from the depths. 30 stories high. Fin Fang Foom. Ah. Uh, sorry. So, oh, late, yeah. so Lady Hellbender takes off in her ship after him, and then Amadeus leaps up and I guess grabs the ship. I guess he's going with her. Okay. Well, careful with that Fin Fang Foom, man. He is, uh, he is an old school monster. You're not going to take him down with one punch. Let me tell you right now, Amadeus. Yeah. But uh, I guess they're starting a uh, letters page in, uh, total, for Totally Awesome Hulk because on the last page there's... Yay. But, um... Letters pages are coming back, man. I had them in the Ultimates, too. Yeah, but... Uh, I yeah, love letters good. pages. But, uh... I start writing some. <laughs> yeah, and then the last thing on the page that they said, finally a few... You know, like the... What's going to be the letters page? They said, finally a few teases for the future. 
Uh, they said, we will indeed reveal exactly what happened to Bruce Banner and what his current status quo is. So we will find that out. Uh, a character we're introducing in this first story arc may just affect the entire Marvel Universe in the fullness of time. Let the speculation begin now. <laughs> Ooh. And then the last one, it said, well, this was issue two. So they say, in issue five, Amadeus will get into a thunderously large amount of trouble and then capitalize thunderously. Wink, wink. <laughs> so are they talking about Ra Thunderbolt Ross or are they talking about the Thunderbolts? No, they... Uh, well, you all probably think they're talking about Thor, but actually I think they're talking about Perun, Russian god of thunder. <laughs> Come on. See? Give it up for Peru. There's like three or four different suspects here. No, yeah, oh, yeah, and then of course you've got the Thor, the Thor, Thor variation that uh, Ragnarok eventually became when he picked up uh, the Thor hammer from an alternate universe. Uh, Thor. Hmm. Yep. But uh, it was a good issue. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah, there's a lot of Thors running around. Not not for nothing. If you really want to start breaking down how many Thors there are, there's a couple. Okay, and now on to. A force number one. So we open up and um, we see Singularity, our little uh, Cosmos Eternity girl from Secret Wars, uh, from the from the A Force comic, coming into our universe, and we see um, she is looking for. Um, She's looking for her friends. And what's interesting here, because it's a nice little flip of the script, um, when she comes to um, the all-new, all-different Marvel Universe, and um, Carol Danvers is on the Alpha Flight Station, which um, I believe comes up later when we get to the Ultimates. Uh, um, um, she sees Carol, but she... It, it's interesting because to Singularity, the normal Marvel Universe is the broken, shattered parody of her real-world Carol Danvers and her real-world um, Medusa, etc. So it's, it's an interesting take there. But she comes there, and she's being all new godlike, and I have all kinds of superpowers. Um, and then our villain of the piece, who is called Antimatter shows up who is this big pink thing who's speaking in yellow word bubbles and saying that she is pain singularity is pain so obviously this is antimatter and singularity and they are opposite forces and their existences hurt each other which leads to a big fight which leads um singularity to escape in an escape pod Carol Danvers to battle singularity or uh, antimatter for a minute, and antimatter to give chase. Antimatter is seeking to uh, de to destroy the little thing, which is what he's she's calling singularity. And singularity goes and finds Jen Walters, who is in a negotiation with a lawyer named Jerry, um, who is apparently trying to steamroll Jen Walters, which is. Funny, but of course, hey, let's face it. In lawyerly, in lawyerliness, her gamma energy doesn't do her nothing. Um, but Jerry runs as um, as listening to She-Hulk as Antimatter shows up and starts battling uh, She-Hulk, who holds her own against this kind of pr pretty powerful being because she is freaking She-Hulk. Let's face it. Um, Singularity catches her as she's falling. Battle, battle, battle. Medusa shows up. Singularity is all happy to see Medusa. Says, friend! And Medusa slaps the cuffs on her, saying, and if this entity is what this creature attacking us wants, then I say we give her to it. Oh, wackiness. Um, a fun, fast, exciting comic. I love the... Um, uh, perspective shift of someone from Secret Wars world coming into our world and seeing our world as the as the mirror darkly version of hers and uh, 
I'm looking forward to the next issue when we get Nico and hopefully Dazzler in it, who they are um, drawing very much like Comic Book Girl 19. So, because I've never seen Dazzler with the like shaved head like that before, but it's very Comic Book Girl 19. So, very excited to see where Dazzler goes next. Um, A Force number one, big thumbs up. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I would watch it for a minute. All right. Well, eh? what's that? I said I thought I lost you there for a minute, Phil. No, no, I'm here. Uh, okay. I'll do my other, my my only other uh, one on my own, which is kind of two and one because you got a bonus book in it. But uh, Spider-Man, Deadpool number one, my pick of the week. Sold out. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's just, there's so many funny lines in here. I don't know. I could be here all night talking about this book, but, uh, basically it's Spider-Man and Deadpool. Well, it opens up with them. It looks like they're, uh, prisoners of Dormammu mm. and, uh, they're all, they're all tied up and, uh, like Spider-Man and Deadpool are like kind of tied, like, I guess looks like front to front and. <laughs> You know, Deadpool's all, if you don't stop squirming, I'm totally going to have to unsheath my katana against all up <laughs> against your spider eggs. And by katana, I mean, and Spider-Man's like, what's wrong with you? What is wrong with it? He's like, what? I'm a red-blooded Canadian male. <laughs> He's like, what? I'm a red-blooded Canadian male. It's friction and junk biology and spandex grinding on leather. <laughs> uh oh. So they base, they basically break loose after uh, Deadpool dislocates his hip. <laughs> uh, they're fighting the mindless ones, and uh, with Deadpool shouting stuff like "Ah, by Odin's Merkin." <laughs> uh, and then Deadpool's like, says to Spider Man, "Do you want to do the flashback or do I?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they flash back. Uh, Peter was uh, fighting Hydro Man. Uh, Hydro Man. Hydro Man. Oh, Hydro Man. Yes. Okay. No. Okay. Not Him, I know. <laughs> yes. Uh. Yeah, the thing for Mary Jane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the animated series. Yeah. Uh. But Deadpool just shows up because he says he has a BAMF. <laughs> so he kind of just teleports in. Uh, and Deadpool's like, ugh, he's, t- he's showing Spider-Man the uh, the app he got from his uh, therapist. What uh, <laughs> This is so weird. <laughs> uh... Then it's like they flash back to the present and that asked me how Spider-Man and Deadpool are fighting the mindless ones and then Deadpool just like kind of pushes brains into the mindless ones so he's like now they're the they're the mindful ones <laughs> because now all of, all of a sudden the mind the mindless ones are telling Dorma Mamu you know why do we have to sacrifice ourselves where was Flang in my job description Wait, wait. So he like takes out his brain and puts it in the mindless ones, or he's, he he's doing... they show him. He's holding. Looks like he's holding like three or so different. He's hold, he pulls like brains out of his pockets and he just like he just like pushes them into the mind mindless ones' heads and he says, "Look, them. Behold, I give you the mindful ones." Wait, wait. How many brains does he take? He's got at least three or so. I don't know where he got them. What color are they? They look like like pink. Mm. Okay, so they're just regular. But um, the only reason I ask, because you know, um, the centuries-old villain from his old comic book that was forced into existence was uh, the Pry-Minded Man, or I can't remember his name, but he basically was a guy with like three brains, and that was his power, and. Uh, I don't know. I'm always watching Deadpool, waiting for something, uh, something fourth wally to happen. Um, so, mm-hmm. it, so he like shoves the brains inside the mindless ones. 
Yeah, it's like he it looks like he just takes it by the hand and shoves it into their head, and then all of a sudden they're. Mm, there's some there's some important craziness in that scene. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I know. Then the, the then man all, with the tri level sudden, brain. That was his thing. The man with the tri level brain. And yeah, uh, that so was now they're mind. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that. Sorry. Now they're all mindful ones. You know they're. Telling the door, Mamu, how do you expect me to perform at my full potential without some encouragement? A simple thank you would suffice or a raise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then Spider Man's telling Deadpool, bamf us out of here. And Deadpool's telling Spider Man, you did a good thing. Every time door Mamu wins, a New York real estate magnet gets his wings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they, I guess they bam foul. And they land on a uh, roof in New York, and uh, Deadpool's telling Spider-Man he has, you know, he should do something about his anger issues and stuff. Uh, he's like, and then Deadpool's talking about his friend, his mercenary franchise, and he's like, how much money he's making, and he. Deadpool said, it probably sucks working for that tool Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's like, wait, what do you mean Peter Parker is a tool? And well, Deadpool's like, you don't get to the 1%. Because Deadpool knows Peter Parker is, Peter, uh, is um, Spider-Man. Spider-Man, does he? Well, he knows everybody's secret identity because he read the books. Uh, I don't know, because he's telling him, he's like, he's like, yeah, Parker's a tool. You don't get to be the 1% without stepping on 99% of other necks in the world. Mm. That may be, that may just be Deadpool trying to get Parker's goat. Uh, Interesting. But, uh, yeah, that, man, I really regret not getting this book now. Uh, but yeah, like Deadpool, Deadpool's offering, uh, then Deadpool offers Spider-Man a job, you know. As one of his mercenaries, and uh, Spider Man's like, No, he's like, What would I get a cold teleport belt too? And that's when Deadpool shows him, He's like, No, I don't have a teleport belt anymore. I have a, I have a BAMF, and I guess it has to obey him because his wife put some kind of uh, magical uh, collar around its neck. Okay. Although Spider Man rips it off. Uh-huh. Uh, and then Spider. Oh, here's another reason you want to get this issue Spider Man gets a call from. Uh, He's late for a meeting. Guess who gives him the call? Marconi. Miss Marconi. Oh, yes. Marconi. She's dreamy. Hmm. She's yeah. and then he he tell he tells her what's been going on, and she's like telling him, you know, fighting bad guys in hell is not what a CEO does. <laughs> uh, uh, he is so the inferior Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then I guess Hydra Man comes back. Uh, he, well, they, well, Peter was fighting him at a sewage treatment plant, so uh, now Hydra Man's giant because he absorbed a bunch of, shall we say, material from the sewage treatment plant. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, Deadpool had some jokes for that. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, toilet humor, as they say. Yeah, but uh, Spider Spider Man starts trying to get into it. Uh, uh, how did they take care? Uh, Spider Man's like, you have a healing factor, right? And Deadpool's like, yeah, it's awesome. It makes Wolverine look like a hemophilia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what is this? It's, uh. Peter uses some kind of sonic thing he was, he had the uh something yep. with the sonic thing and then he throws Deadpool in into Hydra Man and messes him up. Cuz uh, gonna Deadpool have a gets, sonic like, torn thing apart cuz uh, Yeah. But uh so then later they show Peter's like rinsing off his costume everything but the mask he has on and uh Deadpool's regrowing his legs. Uh, and then P- Peter's ready to leave. And he says, "Good luck with your business venture." And uh, 
you know, then Deadpool gets all, you know, he's like, I know, I know. He's like, you think I'm dirt, dirt with the key to Avengers Tower, but I'm trying to change. And, you know, Peter starts feeling sorry for him. And he's like, I need therapy. <laughs> uh, and but then we see back in. He hasn't come back from the dead yet. No, but mm-hmm. uh, back in hell, it looks like it wasn't the real Dormammu. It looks like it was some kind of small one-eyed guy in a tiny guy in a Dormammu suit because I guess Deadpool made a deal with him. <laughs> mm. I don't know if he was trying to convince. It was part of Deadpool's uh, plan to try to convince Spider-Man to be part of his mercenary team. But uh, okay, at the end of the issue, he's like. He, yeah, but at the end of the issue, it, I guess he's like, "Oh, I hope P- I hope Spider Man's not too mad at me because he finds out his next target that he'll get a hundred million dollars for killing is uh, the CEO of Parker Industries, Peter Parker." Oh, waka waka. Mm. So yeah, it's the, in, in this it seems like he doesn't know Peter Spider Man. So. Hmm. Interesting, because I'm sure he's mentioned it in uh, the past before, but maybe. Maybe in the all new, all different Marvel universe, he's um, a little more separated in his mind from uh, his comic awareness. I don't know. I'll have to go yeah. back and see if he because I think he's. I I want to say he's mentioned something about Spider Man's personal life before to other heroes, like not to Spider Man, huh? but he's like mentioned, you know, like, oh Spider Man, he's always dating redheads or something like that, you know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then the we got a bonus book for free because this was a three ninety nine book, but uh, you get the first issue of the Vision in this also. Wow! What a bargain. No. How was the Vision? Yeah. So uh, was it visionary? The Vision's good. Uh, they. Oh. Uh, oh, that deserves it. Hold on. There you go. There you go. But uh, no. Yeah. But yeah, the visions living in uh, where is this? He's living in the suburbs of is it Virginia, I think, because with his with the wife and two children he created. Because I guess the vision is now like the Avengers liaison to the White House. And the neighbors come over to say hi and bring them cookies. <laughs> but uh Did they explain how he basically the wife setting the up the life of It doesn't it doesn't go into details, but basically later on it's like, oh, what's the big secret of like who you know, who, whose brain patterns did he use it did he use? Because at first I thought maybe the wife he used the Scarlet Witch, maybe, but uh at the end of the issue, uh, the Grim Reaper shows up, you know, Wonder Man's brother, because he's like, mm-hmm. you're all frauds and fakes. He's all mad because I guess uh, the Vision must have used Wonder Man's brain patterns for the whole family. Hmm. And in the end, the the wife's like beating on Grim Reaper. So if she didn't kill him, she she really messed him up because she's telling the kids, don't tell your father. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Green Reaper, he dies all the time. So. <laughs> yeah, but see, That's my whole thing was. Thing. <laughs> yeah, but my whole thing was like, don't you think it's w- weird that like, I mean, maybe for the kids, but doesn't Vision consider Wonder Man like a brother? Because they share brain patterns. So why would you use the brain patterns of yourself and the guy you consider your brother for your wife? <laughs> That's a whole other, as we said, sadly, Dr. Samson has not returned from the dead yet to help. I was going to say, people. yeah, we need Samson here. Yeah. We need some, we need, we need a new psychologist in the Marvel Universe because it seems like things are going off the rails. Yeah. But, uh, like I said, uh, Spider-Man Deadpool number one was my pick of the week. Uh, big thumbs up, uh, a lot of humor, great art. Uh, can't wait to see where it goes. Plus, we got that whole uh, extra book, you know, for the price of a regular comic. So, can't beat that. Big thumbs up. Can't beat that with a stick. Okay. Well, um, moving on to my pick of the week, I guess, and I guess we'll do this together, is uh, 
Deadpool number five. Um, I had actually forgotten that I had taken Deadpool off of my pool list uh, this week. And then I realized as I was wandering around looking for my next book, because I only had four, I said, oh, well, let's see if I can get a fifth book. And I said, oh, wait, Deadpool. And um, really, and I actually, uh, you know, I did a lease through and I said, you know, put Deadpool back on. Um, really pleased with this book. Really like where it went. Um, this is actually the first time I think I'm really getting that this is Deadpool's daughter here, which is very sweet. Mm-hmm. Um um, Did you get the Secret Wars reference? Um, uh, where in was be- that? In the beginning, she remember when remember when he died. Remember when he quote unquote died because they. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But she, oh, the yeah. way she's telling it, she's like, "You wanted to sail away with us, then you changed your mind." Yes. Well, as we know, this is all kind of um, all kind of weird since the Secret Wars thing. I mean, you know, it's like the. Thing with the uh, Lady Beetle. And actually, no, that's actually one thing I'm kind of disappointed that I'm not reading Ant-Man anymore because I'm wondering if they're going to retouch with that with um, Ms. Patriot and her visions as the clairvoyant, you know. Um, and does she remember what actually happened and what happened afterwards? But um, anyway, yes, you know, yeah, and that's that's what's interesting about it is that, yes, he... he uh, um, he changed his mind and disappeared. And then, of course, we get a nice little shot of bullets coming towards his daughter and then showing that actually Quicksilver can outrun bullets even, even if he couldn't in the movie. Um, and quickly runs her oh. Yeah, well, I kind of kind of, I, I kind of saw that and said, wow, that looks like, uh, <laughs> that that's reminiscent of something. Um, and they take her to New Jersey, um, because of course, and then there's Steve Rogers driving the truck, because, yeah, they really got to, they can really got to do some definition issues with Steve Rogers, because I saw the preview for Squadron Supreme next week, and it just, it's like, yeah, okay, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, I guess, next week, but, um, or maybe... When we get to super connectivity, but anyway, so we see Madcap, who's all evil and shooty and killy, and um, he's fighting Deadpool, and Deadpool rips off his mask, and he's all twisted and mutated, um, and he basically says that he didn't used to look like this until he was part of Deadpool, and that essentially all of the Darkness in Deadpool went into Madcap, and that's not good. And then Massacre shows up, yay, to save the day. Um, and of course, Deadpool says, um, "You know, uh, with uh, Mas- uh, Madcap says, and finally, when you have nobody left to watch." Die, I'll tell you the hilarious untold tale of Wade Wilson, the amazing arsonist. And he says, uh, what are you talking about? Not yet, Wade. Soon. There's more fun to be had before we get to that. Like the fun guy behind you? I'm not falling for that. And off comes the head. Um, and we see that madcap is kind of like no bones, just all gooey stuff inside. Which I guess is indicative of someone who has got you know uniform uniform cells essentially, um, and uh, Masker is chopping up Madcap. Um, they're gonna put him in the glass box, and Madcap is um, <clears throat> basically saying you know. Um, He's got like this little Chitari disruptor weapon and he decides to atomize himself. And he says, see you after I collect myself. We'll catch up about the old days if you're still in the dark then. Ta ha 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 ha. And then uh, the robot shield agent um, beats up Wade and uh, 
<laughs> Wade punches a guy in the nose. And said, and it says, Deadpool, was that in person person to the one who killed the zoning commissioner? He better be, or there is yet another maniac running around in my uniform. Speaking of which, drop my buy my stores and buy my uniform in your size. Um and then we see all the Deadpool fanatics running around, pull off his mask. And Deadpool looks up and he sees the big billboard of himself. And it says, because you deserve it. Uh, he goes a little bit mad. <laughs> um, he says, uh, let's see here. And Mad, uh, not Madcap, but um, oh, I forget his name. Slapstick pulls up and says, what I miss? You you won't believe what happened to me. Deadpool? says, And Seymour says, hey, Wade, you okay? He says, of course I'm fine. I'm Deadpool. And then we see him essentially smashing all of the inspirational Deadpool posters in the hallway. And next month, Deadpool 2099. And looks like Deadpool 2099 is a lady. So that's cool. Um... Intra, I'm looking forward to seeing what that's all about. But uh, no, I really loved the, I really loved uh, the fifth issue of Deadpool. I really think that they brought the arc to a nice resolution, and um, I think they're getting really dealing with um, a nice, a nice take on uh, Deadpool as a uh, as a character who is both you know tragic and funny and dealing with his own uh, failures and weaknesses. It was uh, a lot of fun. Oh, what yeah, did you think of up. the book? Yeah, thumbs up. I, uh, I like it. Big thumbs up. Yeah. Okay, what's our next book you want to do? Uh, do you want to do Doctor Strange? Sure, Doctor Strange. Um, man, talk about books that leave you, leave you in the darkest depths of despair. Um... Uh, the art of puking without puking. Uh. We art. That's the name of the title. That's the title of the book, kids. Um. Uh. And we see um, Doctor Strange and the Ancient One, um, sort of having a conversation. The Ancient One is saying, you know, punch me as hard as you can. And Doctor Strange is like, uh, but my, but my hands, man, I don't want to, you know, hurt my hands. He says, "You'll be fine." Says the ancient one. And of course, he punches him and hurts his hand. And then he says, um, uh, "The ancient one says, if a normal punch takes a physical toll on the one who throws it, what do you imagine the price of casting a spell to be?" And, of course, Dr. Strange says, nothing as far as I can tell. I mean, I've been casting spells all week, and I feel perfectly barf and starts throwing up. He says, every punch comes at a cost. Now you know how it feels to be a magician. Uh, yes, and then we've got uh, at the bar with no doors, all of the magic users of various stripes, good and ill, all gathered together to discuss the coming problem in the world of magic. Um, it's kind of nice, uh, you know, Damien Hellstrom's there, and he's actually saying, yeah, it'll be nice to actually do something good for, for a change. I haven't done that in a while. Um, they're all going to go talk around their various levels of the mystical realms to find out what's going on. Um, uh, and, of course, there's uh, Monaco... You know, says, hmm, damn, Doc Kingpin paying his mystical tab, just like I said, and now it's coming due. And apparently Chandu, um, who is part of the headmen, as you may recall, he's the mystical head of Chandu, uh, says, try paying your, he's apparent, he apparently owns the bar with no doors, and says, try paying your bar tab sometime, Monaco, that's a magic trick I'd like to see. Um, <laughs> Yes, uh, Doc, phone is for you. It's Wong. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid there's been another death. And the death was the Book of Watoom. Dun, dun, dun. And um, uh, Zelda says, you know, the Grimoire of Tatum, the last time I opened it, a hurricane came pouring out. But now 
pages are empty and leftists. I'm, I'm sorry, Doc. I, I, I didn't know a book could die. And I didn't either. Yeah. And she says, you know, I'm a library. If books are dying, I have a right, right to know. Think his stomach can digest anymore. And um, Doctor Strange goes to the Temple of Watum, which is deep underneath the Indian Ocean. And then, enigmatically, Wong says to, as Doctor Strange leaves, says, I'm sorry, Stephen. Sorry I never told you the truth. Dun, dun, dun. What could the truth be? We'll see you next month, I'm sure. Uh, in the Temple of Watum, Doctor Strange realizes that basically all the magic has been drained of there, and then he gets attacked by the... Well, he gets a call on his cell phone from Zelma, who he's saying it's not really a good time, and he, she's telling him that all the books are dying. Um, and Doctor Strange, he's, she, he's battling... The monsters, but then he realizes, you know, this is this this is Doctor Strange calling anyone who can hear me on all known mystical wavelengths. I was wrong. I was so very wrong. My enemy isn't coming. I says our enemy isn't coming. They're already here. Um, you know, great book from great book from Doctor Strange once again. Um, I really am loving the um. Sort of, uh, I mean, just, I mean, it's such a weighty concept, just the idea of the death of magic. And one imagines how that affects the Marvel Universe. I have to assume magic's going to continue on. I'm going to go out on a limb on that one, but it is a very harrowing to watch and very harrowing to enjoy and to see what costs are going to be paid when uh, our mystical bar tab comes due. So big thumbs up for Doctor Strange for me. What do you think, Phil? Um, yeah, big thumbs up for me, too. Uh, yeah, it's, this is a real intriguing story. Um, just the whole thing with the puking and just yeah. everything. It's, I don't think they've ever gone this, this in-depth before, you know, about the price magic takes on the, on the human body. and. Yeah. Well, you know, and you know, this is actually something that I want to get touch on. Because, I mean, it's very interesting to me how... How much more interconnected the Marvel Universe is getting, kind of, of late? Because, you know, when we get to the Ultimates, and, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things in the Ultimates that make direct reference to the last Fantastic Four run about the Pym Particles. And, of course, Monaco, the Prince of Magic, made a very big point in um, that Fantastic Four run, uh, the, you know, about how magic has this cost. And,. You know, and, and this is why he says Doom is not... The, you know, so I thought you people said Dr. Doom was a great magician. He's a dabbler, you know? He's not someone who knows that you have to sacrifice mm -hmm. for magic. You know? um, of course, maybe Doom, Doom did, did do magic, just sacrificed a lot of other people, not himself, you know? Um, which is the key of black magic versus uh, more positive magic of which you sacrifice yourself, one imagines. But... Um, no, and it's just very interesting to see these ideas played out much more throughout the Marvel Universe as they sort of come into, I think what I kind of feel is like more of a grand unified theory of the Marvel Universe right now, which is, if, if, you're, if you're a continuity nerd, that is like music to your ears, the harmony of the spheres of the Marvel Universe. So, yeah, big thumbs up. And I, honestly, I, said, I would have to... I have to say that this was probably one of the hardest weeks for me to actually have a pick of the week. Um, you know, I think Deadpool yeah. wins it just from being such, you know, uh, you know, it's just it's such a story filled with, you know, this. I'm so intrigued by the tragedy of Deadpool. And I think that is, I think, the most perfect thing about Deadpool is how being the man who knows the absurdity of the universe makes you so tra makes you tra tragic. You know, it's it's again it's like like what is intriguing about Howard the Duck. It's it's the idea that you know what is tragic is seeing the world for its own absurdity, and yet still having to move through. As you know, as Pagliacci sings, you know, 
it's time to put on our pants, time to put on our costumes and go out and perform the show because we have to perform on the sh- this show. The show must go on. But recognizing the absurdity and the tragedy of life is, I mean, it, that, that's what, you know, the clown who cries is really the, the, the most perfect character. It, it is both comedy and drama merged. It is the one thing. It is, when you look at it, it, it is the laughter, but it is also the crying tears as they laugh. It is, it is perfect. And I think that's why Deadpool, you know, holds his pick of the week spot. But man, I tell you, Doctor Strange came tr- close. The Ultimates, just as close. And, uh, Invincible Iron Man was good too because hey MJ, and she's wearing you know belly shirts. So uh, yeah, there were. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of good stuff this week. Yeah. So what do we want to do next? Ultimates or Invincible Iron Man? Uh, speaking of Invincible Iron Man and misleading covers, man. Uh... All right. That, so that is. Man. Uh, yeah, unless you want to do Ultimates. Whatever you want to do first. No, that's fine. We can do Invincible Iron Man. This, this, Ultimate. Like you were saying, a lot of good books. This one and Ultimates. I mean, there was a struggle with me. Either one of these could have been my pick of the week, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I really... Honestly, Ultimates, Doctor Strange, Invincible, Deadpool. They were all really good. Even A-Force. Even, you know, A-Force, I, you know, it has a little bit of first issue... Um... You know, let, let, let's build our universe stuff. But even that was really good. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I think, you know, any other week, any other week, any of these could have been a week of the week. But you know, I think we've been saying that a lot about the Marvel comics. As I've said, you know, a lot of I really feel Marvel is really bringing their A game um, oh, in the yeah. all new universe. Anyway, so we open up with MJ saying, "I am so completely and utterly screwed, superheroes <laughs> again." Every time, every time a superhero shows up in my life, I have to start over. I put everything I had into this club. Everything. I open the doors, and then seconds later, this. Oh. And Iron Man says, if I may, anyone who doesn't have cosmic, mystical, technological, or any other kind of superpower, I highly suggest leaving the premises immediately, if you haven't already. Not you, Whitney Frost. And they begin their tag team battle, Doom and Iron Man versus Whitney Frost, hyped up on the power and magic stuff. But we realize that even though she's powered up, even though she's dealing with forces she cannot possibly comprehend, she still holds her own against Doom and Iron Man, even putting a little mystical whammy on Doom, who, as the Prince of Magic Monaco has told us, is really just a dabbler in the mystical arts. Um, But of course, what takes her out, Phil? As she has Iron Man right where she wants him, ready to destroy him, and who's the hero of of, 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 of of, of of the book, Phil? Mary Jane Watson. Mary Jane Watson with a mic stand, wham, right to the back of the head. Never turn your back on Mary Jane Watson. That's what you learned from that. And you and Whitney have a little magic battle. Whitney is all vampire-y and demon-y. Um, they wrap her up in armor, hold her in place as Doom performs a quick fancy exorcism on her. They send the demon back to whatever dimension she came from. And, of course, then Doctor Strange shows up. It's like, so nice of you to show Doctor Strange, really, you know. Mm-hmm. Of course, as we saw, he's got his own stuff to deal with. That's actually one of these, you know, one of these points we got in uh, Howard the Duck last week, or actually two months ago with uh, Gwenpool, where Gwenpool was like, well, can't the Avengers just solve the problem? And Howard's like, do you have any idea how many adventures the Avengers are on right now? You know, do you have, have any idea how close this universe always is to absolute destruction? Well, it was a good thing Doom and Tony Stark were there, because, of course, now Doctor Strange shows up. Uh Doctor Strange takes her. Um, he's gonna help her out, and 
You know, Tony says, seriously, thanks for coming here and helping with this. He says, of course, I had to. We're awesome facial hair bros. <laughs> and that was worth it. And then Mary Jane is in a park in Chicago. The the fountain that you see at the start of Married with Children. Very lovely. And she is lamenting her life. Uh, asks if Tony is hitting on her. And Tony says, no, I'm actually kind of involved with someone, you know. Which is that super smart lady from the last season, you know. Uh, last two issues. And Tony offers her a job. And... As Tony is flying off saying to her, to um, Mary Jane, but you'll like me. What's not to like? And Friday says, oh, I have a prepared list. Uh-huh. Uh, I, and I, I do like the, 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 the wackiness between um, uh, Tony and Friday. That's, that's always fun. Um, Tony likes women who put him in his place. Uh, also, like seeing the little Captain America and Spider Man running in the in the foreground there. That's a very cute scene. And another letters page. Shock it, sock it to Shellhead, where the George R. R. Martin Martins of the future are now writing to the writers of uh, of the Invincible Iron Man. Good old Bendis. And of course, next issue, um, Mary Jane wears a belly shirt. So. <laughs> Tune in for that, kids. Uh, no, just a fun book, a great book. What did you like? Did you like it, Phil? Oh, yeah, I loved it. Big thumbs up. Anything you want to comment on from it? Uh, I don't think... Uh, One other... thing really interesting in this is uh, we actually get a kind of decent shot of uh, Whitney Frost's face. After she's all knocked out, and you actually see that she's that like all the filigree. Oh no! Okay, I see they're putting the mask back on her. Okay, that's what that was. I thought that they were showing that the, all the filigree on her mask was on her face. Well, but that's actually he's actually putting the mask back on her as part oh, of his. One thing I did want to mention is I saw on Twitter the other day someone asked uh, Brian Michael Bendis, they're like, why doesn't Mary Jane remember Tony from when, you know, Peter and Mary Jane were living in Avengers Tower with them, and Bendis was like, well, between, you know, the whole Mephisto deal and Spider-Man, and the time, you know, Tony wiped his, you know, wiped his memory, and then this is all after Secret Wars, so he's like, I think that all pretty well covers it. Yeah, yeah. Because it helps the story. That's the answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then they actually said, because he had previously said that Tony remembered her from the tower, but actually, when we see here, he actually doesn't remember her from the tower either. He actually no. remembers her because she's Mary Jane, supermodel, you know, uh, from this, an actress from the series Jackpot, you know. Um, I think that, or was it? Jackpot? No, no, that, that was her catchphrase, and it was "Face it, Tiger, you hit the jackpot" in her little sitcom uh, thing, I believe. If I'm remembering correctly, uh, from the new revised, revised, revised universe, which who knows what that is now, um, but it's eight months later, whatever it is. Um, and then we open up with the Ultimates, and. Um, we get, uh, the share. Share. <laughs> I never know quite how to pronounce share, you know. Is it, um, is it Shiar? Shiar, yeah. It's, I believe that's, I believe that's how they said it in the cartoons, was the Shiar. I um, think so, yeah. Yes. And we see they go to the, um, uh, planet, uh, Archaeopia, which was, of course, the planet that, um, um, Galactus had returned to life, and we actually see Smasher here, who is a uh, Avenger. Um, nice to see her getting work, and yeah. mentor, and this, uh, you know, pasty chick. Um, I'm trying to give her a night name. She has total psychoscopic awareness and mind sight, um, and so she can uh, see what was there. And what they see is Galactus, and they say this changes everything. 
Open up on Alpha Flight Station once again, man. Those the Canadian Space Agency is really doing well in the Marvel Universe. Let's 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 just put that out there. And Captain Marvel is looking at her reflection, and then of course the Captain Marvel reflection talks back, and it's uh, it is Spectrum, also known as Captain Marvel. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is that is that is always awkward there, you know, because. <laughs> Because Monica will always be Captain Marvel to me, you know. She didn't have to wait for someone to tell her it was time for you to take the title. She just took the dang title. And she said, I am freaking Captain Marvel. Um, interesting is Puck is apparently now a person of color, which is fine. Um, but it was an interesting shift in the universe um, uh, among shifts that they might have, or maybe they're just saying he's particularly tan, but we have Puck here um, who t- tells uh, Carol that um, the Magister of the Shi'ar on, is on the line for you, boss. Sounds urgent. This is Captain, uh, Captain Marvel, representative of the Earth, subspecies human. What have you done? Dun, dun, dun. And two hours later, the Ultimates are meeting, and Adam Brashear, the Blue Marvel, says, On the bright side, we were right. Galactus has evolved to his true role as a positive, restorative, universal force. Frankly, I'm happy to bask in the glow of the job. Uh, Carol is, don't do that. Don't bask. They sure are furious, Adam. They say we should have consulted them before we took unilateral action. And, and um, you know... And Monica says, are you sure they're, they're not just mad they didn't think of it first? Very likely. That doesn't mean they're wrong. So I'd like to avoid taking any more actions of universal significance until I can smooth this over. It says, And, of course, the Ch- uh, Chala says, that would be, I- would be the ideal course of action. But, unfortunately, the universe does not always wait. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, again, and now we get into the fact that here's the problem. Time is broken. We have people living together long term with their own past selves. We have visitors from the future regularly attempting to alter their past. Cut to Loki. Um, we have historical figures exploring our time and taking knowledge back with them. Occasionally, present day people become historical figures, cutting to uh, the thing as Blackbeard. Even after the so called Age of Ultron incident, when time nearly shattered under the strain, we had continued to abuse it. It can't go on. And of course, this is this is true. You know, we've been saying this. Wait, isn't time supposed to be broken? Shouldn't we be not doing this? And other basically hanging their lampshade on it and saying, Yes, this is a problem. And this is again where I'm talking where I wanted to make a mention of, you know, the interconnectedness of the cosmic universe. Remember last month we were talking about Doctor Doom and how how he explained, you know, his doom lock technology that allows you to travel in time. Well, here it gets called out, you know, and says, of course, much of this can be laid at the door of Victor Von Doom. His quasi-mystical doom lock technology being what allows these travelers to cross their own timelines. If I could, I'd prevent him from inventing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's not. But you'd need a doom lock to do that. You see the problem. And, of course, my, uh, America... Which was weird, because they keep on calling her Mac later. And that was, like, very confusing. Why do they keep on calling Ma- uh, America Chavez Mac? I guess America Mac. Yeah. I don't know. It, it was a, it's an interesting catchphrase to stick to her. I'm not quite... Or nickname to give her. I'm not quite sure where. But basically it says, you know, don't even joke. I've seen timelines where they tried that. Tried to put the genie back in the bottle. Uninvent the bomb. Cause and effect there is like spaghetti. Spaghetti that screams. Yes, well, quite. Obviously, we don't want that happening to us. The problem is we can't fix the space-time continuum. We can't even assess the damage from where we are from the inside, which is why Chala and I built the ship. <laughs> and they basically bring in the brand-new giant man! Yay! Raz Malhotra, if you, Malhotra from uh, the... Um, previous, uh, f- from the Ant-Man annual. Um, he is, and again, we we're going to discuss the three axes of the um, Pym Particles, as discovered by Scott Lang in, again, Fantastic Four, or sorry, FF. Um, and they discussed programming the Pym Particles to allow hyperdensity to be applied to the ship, 
so they can survive in the null space. Uh, America opens up the portals for them. Um, basically, it's putting a lot of strain on her because she's moving other things into the... Uh, and actually, one great thing there where... Um, <laughs> Uh, the Blue Marvel, where, you know, uh, Giant Man wants to come along, and Blue Marvel says, you know, have you ever fought a uh, Cthulhu before? Says, no, yeah. Says, well, when you have, then talk to us. I wouldn't feel right taking someone so new to this on a mission like this. And uh, <laughs> Giant Man says, damn, I need to fight a Cthulhu. And then we see that, quite frankly, yes, there are a lot of Cthulhus in the, in, 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 in the neutral zone. And um, Monica, or sorry, not Monica, uh, America is sort of dealing with, you know, your basic nosebleed, brain hemorrhage. I just opened gateways to quantum universes uh, problem. And Monica says, you know, take your time. The view is spectacular. And then they see him, the, the being. It's Connor Sims. The Anti Man. This, of course, is the bum bum bum. Yes, the villain that Blue Marvel had banished at the end of his uh, at the end of his graphic novel, which I really got to I really got to get uh, Adam the Legend of the Blue Marvel. I really do. And of course, the Ultimales book here. Uh, one more letters page. Gotta love these. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, just uh, you know, just another great book. Great opening, and here I gotta. I just want to call this out. You see the standoff ad there? Yeah. yeah. With the little girl holding the cosmic cube. <laughs> what are the ads that that's that's Valeria uh, Richards there? Oh. Who are the screaming heads inside? Inside the cosmic cube. These are the questions we ask. Um. Uh, oh man, what it. What if Valeria Von Doom is the whisperer, or Valeria Richards is the uh, the the whisperer? Hmm. Interesting. Well, she's, the, she's the one who put everything back after Secret Wars. Mm. Um. Oh, on the latest page, someone calls out the Sentry. Uh. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, a uh, really, really good book. Um, can't wait to read all these letter pages. That's the only problem, man, is I'm rushing to read these books between Wednesday and Friday, and uh, I actually I hadn't even finished reading Ultimates until just this just before we started podcasting, but man, great book. Okay, so that's all our books, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, everyone. <laughs> Remember to come back next week. It's going to be a big week next week. So you need us to guide the way. <laughs> uh, any questions, comments, concerns, you can email us, marvelroundup at gmail.com. On Facebook, we're all new Marvel Roundup. And on Twitter, we're at marvel underscore roundup. And, of course, you can talk anything DC or Marvel about with me, uh, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. And on Twitter, I'm at nightwingpdp. Charlie? And, of course, you can always tweet me on the Twitters, at Charlie Esser, C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R. -E -E look at the two E. Look for the two E's in the middle, because that means quality. And then, of course, write to me, always write to me, at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. All and right. Okay. Is that it? That's it. That's <laughs> Those are my guys. Right. Yep. Yes. All right, everyone. Like I said... Come back next week. Well, come back for super connectivity in a day or two, and then come back next week. Remember, it's all Deadpool. It's Deadpool's world. We're just living in it. Good night. Good night.